Uh, Kevin, the Roscommon final is on this weekend. Porrick Pierce is against St. Bridget's. With Porrick Pierce's having won their first one last year and St. Bridget's looking for their 17th, is there a feeling of, of new money versus old money here? Uh, I would have, I would have said the feeling locally is that Park Pierce's are in the driving seat. Um, they broke through the the glass ceiling last year. Um, the last time they played Bridges in the championship, they beat them. Uh, in, that was in last year's quarter final. Um, Bridges are the storied team, I suppose, here in in, in Roscommon, um, because they've won so many championships. I, they've never lost a final to Pierce's. I was involved in one of them myself. Funny enough, uh, it was a final that Pierce's had every right to win, but didn't because they just couldn't break through the barrier. Uh, eventually, the, the arrival of Pat Flanagan, uh, he has certainly toughened them up. They didn't need much toughening up, but he gave them another bit of edge. He organized them. Uh, they have a way they like to play. Uh, it's very Brafie esque. Uh, they're quite defensive. They have big name players uh, in their in their in their team uh, and they play the game at a certain tempo not not a fast tempo a slow methodical build up coming out of defense usually through the hand get it into a shooting position and they have good forwards they have lots of scoring forwards yeah so that's um that's going to be a big positive uh, for them um old money versus new money i i wouldn't put it that way i really wouldn't um i see bridget's just they're on the bottom of their of their cycle on the way up no doubt about that they have a coming team um this is there must be 10 of these lads have you the numbers on how young but i know it's a really young squad yeah i was, I was chatting to martin Wynn, who's a journalist there and he was saying that they have a lot of young skillful lads 18 19 20 the open mm. expansive brand of football that you were talking about and he, he was just saying to me that the like the daily brothers for example the four of them you're talking about physical players versus these these small younger guys I mean, yeah. does, does that give an edge to Park Pierce's for you or the fact that the other guys are young and skillful and coming through and the history of, of winning with Bridget's, is that a level? Yeah. Well, Bridget's top top three scorers are these uh, young lads, uh, young Sugru, uh, young Darwin and, and Ben O'Carn in the full forward. And, you know, and I think, I think he's still, he, he plays in the minor match, the, the minor final the day before, perhaps. Um, the, they, are, they are an exciting team. Um, the physicality of of Pierce's, I think, is very often overstated. Like they're not as physical as people make them out to be. The Daily Lads aren't as physical as people make them out to be. They're good footballers. Uh, Pierce's just get involved in a bit more. They like to slow the play down, and so in contact and at free at free time, uh, there tends to be always some sort of a discussion afterwards about about the free whether it was given or not and that slows it down and there's pushing and pulling and a bit of handbagging going on around it but the whole idea is that the free has been delayed uh, and, we're, and and they're nicely set up behind so they're excellent at that they're hugely experienced at that you know they'll have a, a row over just about every second uh free that's awarded and that's that's what they do so if you know that you have to understand the requirement to beat it which is get the tempo up and keep the tempo up um but they're good footballers. Like you can't take that away from Pierce's. They have, you know, they've uh, uh, Niall Carty, Hugh, Hugh, Hugh Darcy, Payne, Butler. The four Daily lads are top class players, and and make huge contributions to their club. You know, they play. They when when Pierce's win, they all have played well. You, you can you can be sure sure of that. So it is again a bit like I was previewing the Bayon final. It's a very experienced team, a champion team now. They're the champions, so and all that will, all that uh, stress and anxiety of Jesus, we have to win one, or will we, will we retire, lads, without ever winning a county? That's over. They've won it now, and now they're going, you know, for double champion. Um, they've never, as I said, never beaten Bridges in a final, but they did beat them in last year's quarterfinal, which is the most relevant match, obviously. Um, and they know Bridges are an exciting young team. And what, what do you think they'll want to do with them? Keep them down for as long as they can keep them down. Um, I think eventually they're going to emerge. Is this year uh, a year too soon for them? That would be the general talk around Roscommon. Uh, I'm not sure I subscribe to that. And I'm, I'll go into a bit more detail about that later, perhaps. Again, very light knock more. This is going to be a tight match. If one team stretches a chain and wins it by six, seven points, that'll be Bridges. 
because they're you know they score freely like they're those three young fellas in the full forward line are the three top scorers for Bridget's and right? that's where the scores are coming from but you know flip that coin and you can be sure Pierce's are going to sit on top of those three right mm-hmm. they, they're going to be playing senior football now on Sunday uh, in the heat of a final and they're going to get more attention than they've ever got in a football match in their lives so far mm-hmm. that's just the way it is that's that's proper right and proper but that's that's the way it is again both managements excellent at Flanagan for Pierce's has them highly organized He's got the big win from last year, and they've got to this final exactly like Bravey. It's a, it's a mirror image these two these two county finals. They have not been impressive. Uh, they nearly did not get out of their groups. Their group, um, they could have been beaten by Clan the last day, no doubt about that. Um, they beat the beat the Gales handy enough, all right. Uh, that was probably maybe their best performance to date. Whereas Bridget's have answered every question so far every single question so far um they've won impressively uh they've scored at at, le- at, at will their big loss of course is selling to bride has gone gone out foreign uh, and he's obviously a loss um they have a couple of lads left from the 2013 campaign but they're not the major contributors even though peter tomikin was outstanding in the semi-final i hope carol cunniff would be back for bridgets i really like watching him as a player um but they're going to be up against it you know, I have huge admiration for Niall Carty, who's playing midfield for Pierce's, and he's doing a big job for them there, steadying it up. Um, Ronan Daly's playing particularly well. Uh, it, it's it's beautifully poised, again. I, I know that sounds cliche, no, and I'm not avoiding a, a result or anything like that. Again, I'd be leaning towards Bridget's, and that's not because of my connection with them. I think they are... Like, when are you ready to win a final, Shane? Like, sure, it's there for the take, and you just go for it. You know, mm-hmm. that would be my sense of it. Um, the what will haul, haul them back, haul them back would be, you know, Fierce's a fierce competitiveness from Pierce's, which you can be sure they will bring to the table. And um, they're a bigger, stronger team, and yet Bridges are no shrinking violets. They have plenty of big lads as well. Eddie Nolan at midfield has been outstanding in the championship, maybe the player of the championship. Um, even though this young full forward line has been top notch uh, as well. Um, yeah, very, very, very well poised. Uh, very well poised, I would have said, an experienced team versus an emerging team. But that emerging team could, if they hit form and started scoring in, like they did in their semi final, uh, remind me who they beat in the semi final, Shane. And uh, when Bridget beat head. Boyle, Bridges beat Boyle, too, yes, Boyle, Boyle yeah, yeah. Yeah. and, and uh, again, uh, I watched that match on TV. And they blew them away. I mean, the scores they got in that first half are sensational. And and Boyle had come with a fairly decent reputation and, and the possibility that they might get to a final for the first time in, in Yonks. Um, Bridges had the game wrapped up all over early doors through superb open football. Now, will they get that sort those sort of spaces? Well, the high park is a is a big pitch, but Pierce's will have a much more solid defensive setup. And Flanagan has definitely brought that to them, way more organised. Um, so both teams will plan in great detail. My old friend, uh, Benny O'Brien, is, is the manager of, of uh, Bridget's. He was with me in, in 2012 and 2013 in Bridget's. A very astute guy, real student of the game. Um, and he will have figured out his matchups very carefully. So, you know, he'll be looking at uh, Niall Carty and the Daily Boys and who which one of them has to, has to be reduced to just a, a bystander, if possible. Um, and he has, he has lots of options. He's a very athletic uh, team. That's youth, I suppose. They'll run, they'll run for Ireland and they'll, 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 they'll keep it going. Um, if it gets into a dogfight, Pierce's will win it. Mm-hmm. Uh, if it's anyway, the tempo is kept up and it's open, um, Bridget's will win it. If the game moves out and there was to be any sort of a margin of victory, it will be Bridget's that will do that. Pierce's won't, in, in my view. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but my expectation is that it's going to be uh, toe-to-toe stuff um, and Bridges will find it difficult to get that tempo that they'd want against a highly organised um, Pierce's setup. From, from your time with Bridges, I'm sure they're close to your heart, what, what is it about the club that they're so good at developing young players that you can get back to a county final despite losing Frankie Dolan, Carol Mannion, Ian and Senan Kilbride in the last few years? How, how are they able to keep doing it? Um, a tradition now, of course. Now, that tradition was there well before I, I, I arrived on the scene, Shane. I hastened had. Um, they believe in, in youth structures and board and and 
and, and bringing players up. Uh, they have good coaches at club level. You don't see too many Bridget's uh, officers or coaches getting involved at county board level. That is that is a fact uh, because they keep them in their own club. Uh, I don't know if they consciously do that, but they do. And uh, I would say um, that there's a huge insistence on the fundamentals of the game at underage level. It's highly organized. They have fabulous facilities, of course. Now, they put the facilities in place, nobody else. So uh, you can't begrudge them that. Um, two-handed, uh, two-footed would be a, an insistence of theirs from an early, an early age. So when they get to adult level, the skills of the game are pretty much mastered. So coaches are not dealing too much in, you know, trying to kick with your weak foot or pass with your weak hand. Uh, so the skills of the game can be executed even under pressure. They're good at that. They'll, and you'll see that on Sunday. You'll see the young players, if they have to go left, they go left. If they have to go right, they go right. It, it doesn't bother them. Um, the other side of the game is that they're well conditioned. There is a, a standard there from their predecessors. They're in the middle of, well, not in the middle, they're in the early stages of a big uh, development up there. They're putting in a, a state of the art gym because this is the way forward. They, you know, they're young players, they want them well conditioned. Uh, in terms of gym, in terms of track, in terms of all, all, all that stuff. So they come, you know, when you get them as a 19, 20 year old, they're very experienced. They will generally have played county because they, they send a lot of their underage players into um, a Ted Webb process, uh, an academy process I was talking about in the Roscommon Minor setup. Uh, so they have a lot of good experience there uh, with the under 20s as well. So when they're a young player in Bridges, they've, they've been through a lot. They're quite experienced. And they're good. They're fundamentally good players. And you put that into a pot where you've Benny O'Brien, a hugely experienced manager um, at this level of the game, and he's going to make the most of them. And, uh, you know, and any chats I was having with Benny was just, he said, he couldn't, he said, it's just lovely to be involved with them. There's no hassle. There's no bullshit. Uh, they turn up, they do their work. They're ready to play. Uh, and the only thing that's holding them back really at this stage is the senior experience. And I, 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 maybe I'm, I'm a bit naive about this, but you know, we won our championships when we were young, right? There's the other side of youth that doesn't care. They don't get all this mad stuff we get into our heads when we're in our late twenties, and, and and the little fella starts asking a lot of questions. They go in there and just have a cut, you know. Um, now there will be a physical reality, but that mental reality might never dawn on a young fella. He might just go and have it. He might think this is, this is much more than a county minor final. Don't we win all those? Yeah. Um, so there, there could be that aspect but it's unlikely that, that that is a bit innocent perhaps there's going to be plenty of thunder uh, in the final um, but Bridget's are well capable of winning it there's no, no doubt about that yeah I just, I just a final thing before I let you go then I'm not saying Pierce's are a dirty team or anything like that but last year in the semi-final they showed they can do what needs to be done you know three red cards three black cards eight yellow cards and we did yeah. talk if it gets to a physical game it's more likely going to be Pierce's so yeah. for a finish just your, your kind of Prediction, is it going to be Pierce's? Um, I don't think so. No? I don't think so. I think Bridget's, I think Bridget's will have that confidence in themselves and what they want to do. I think Benny O'Brien won't be too worried about Pierce's. He'd be worried about can he get his players to perform. He gets his players to perform as they've been performing. They're going to win it. But that's the trick now. The opposition is better. They're better organised. Um, you know, the, the, the Pierce's lads are grizzled at this stage. They understand what has to be done. I don't particularly condone that type of play. Um, in fact, I don't at all condone that type of play. Um, but they do what they have to do. I don't think it's very edifying in terms of the spectacle. The games are on TV these days, and you see this continued haranguing of referees and and cards and so on. It's it's just I don't know. It, it doesn't do anything for me anyway personally. But unfortunately, in in, in this game, uh, it can get results for you if referees aren't strong enough and so on and and that can happen too um the prediction i'm gonna go with bridget's and that's not that's not that's not my heart talking um i would love to see bridget's win it obviously i, I think they're they're, they're a, a serious young team but i have huge admiration for what pierce's have done because you know at a different level bridget's were trying to win all ireland when i got down there and the, the difficulty of it Shane, like just to try and make that breakthrough is so so hard. 
And so what Pat Flanagan and the Daily Lads and all those fellas faced 12 months ago, trying to be the maiden winners uh, for their club. Like you can't underestimate that challenge. It was a huge challenge. And they, they got it done. They got it done. Yeah, And you have to admire that. Now, I don't think, now that they've made the breakthrough, I don't have a sense that this is something they're going to build on and build on because, you know, they're, 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 uh, they're, they're a, a team that spent so long trying to make the breakthrough. I think it's unlikely they're going to build on it, but I, I can't rule it out. Um, but I think it's unlikely. Um, their form hasn't been good enough, you know, uh, in their groups, their group stage, and in the, the the once it got to the to the um, loser, uh, the the quarterfinal semifinals. I don't think their form has been good enough to say that they're going to win this with anything to spare. If they win it, it's going to be tight. And I just had a sense that a bit like down in Mayo, where the young emerging underdog um, may make the breakthrough, I think the same thing might happen in uh, in Roscommon. Brilliant stuff, Kevin. Really appreciate your time. Not at all, Shane. Nice to chat to you.